Hey guys, so I'm here in Zapopan in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. And I'm here walking my dog, Herbie. There he is right there. And yeah, I don't know if everybody knows, everybody should know, I guess if you've been following my content for a while, you will know that my wife and I moved from New Zealand to Mexico in February this year. So we've been here for a few months now, really enjoying our time here in Mexico. And it's definitely, I guess, been different in some ways maybe than what we expected, you know, the, the same in some ways maybe what we expected, but certainly it has been a amazing ride so far and you know we expect it to continue to be an amazing ride the one of our motivations we had many motivations I guess of moving from New Zealand to Mexico I was a little bit lucky in that I grew up in Southern California Riverside east of Los Angeles and so I had been to Mexico multiple times when I was younger so I had a little bit more of an understanding, I guess, of what the Mexican culture was like, what it would be like when we got here, and you know what our, I guess what our experience would would mostly be like. And it's been a it's been a journey. It's especially been a journey for Sarah. I mean, I, I was also lucky in that I took Spanish in high school for a couple of years, and so I definitely wasn't fluent by any stretch of the imagination. But also grew up and had Mexican friends growing up and. One of my first, in fact, I think it was my first real official job where I got a paycheck was working at a car wash in Southern California uh, at the weekends and in the evenings. And um, I was one of the only white guys working there. It, almost everyone else working there was, was Mexican. And so if I wanted to communicate with my coworkers, I really had no choice but to speak Spanish. And so, um, you know, that kind of forced me into... Um, getting to know Spanish a little bit more, understanding the culture a little bit more, so I definitely was a bit lucky in that in that regard. But I think there is this misconception about Mexico in many ways, and you know, this is kind of an analogy of life, I guess, is that people have this misconception of Mexico because oftentimes they haven't been here, they haven't traveled here, they haven't lived here, you know, they haven't. You know, they maybe haven't known Mexicans in their life before. They haven't met Mexicans. They haven't broken bread with Mexicans. They haven't, you know, partied with Mexicans. They haven't, they haven't really learned about Mexico firsthand. And so, therefore, they everything that they think they know about Mexico comes from the mass media, the mainstream media, and the what I like to call the fear porn media. Because if there's anything that we've learned through COVID, for example is that the media are very, very bad at painting an unbiased picture of almost any situation around any topic anywhere in the world. You know, they are all about getting media funding from local governments. They're all about getting, you know, clicks to their websites and their blogs and, you know, to their online channels and to, you know, their traditional media channels, television and the like. And so... We can't expect mainstream media to be unbiased. By definition, they are biased. And by definition, they're going to do whatever it is that is going to make them the most money and curry the most favor politically, etc., etc., etc. And so I think, uh, you know, that was borne out massively during COVID. And, you know, as someone who intentionally avoids almost all forms of mainstream media and tries to be more of a creator than a consumer of media... Um, you know, when we got to Mexico, I think that, you know, my, my wife was reasonably concerned, I guess, about the potential safety aspects of, of Mexico, the potential crime aspects of, of Mexico, and really, you know, her family very concerned, you know, my family probably to a lesser degree a little bit concerned, and so it's, um, it's been a, um, I'm just going to get my dog's ball here. Um, it's been a, it's been a 
it's been a welcome relief, I think, to her, to her family, uh, and even to me. You know, we, we got brought our dog with us from New Zealand, and so that added to uh, the, the sense of security, particularly that, that my wife has felt here as having our dog here, you know, as, as you know, free, free security guard, basically, and, and a free alarm system. But, you know, what's funny about this is, is that neither my wife nor myself have felt unsafe even once since we moved to Mexico. I've been traveling around a lot and we've done lots of things. You know, we started out in Mexico City, we then moved to Queretaro, we then moved to San Miguel de Allende, we then moved to Guanajuato City, uh, and now we're in Guadalajara and we've driven all that way. Well, we took a bus from Mexico City to Queretaro and then once we were in Queretaro, we uh, went back to Mexico City and bought a car in Mexico City with the help of a Mexican friend who we met through Airbnb. We stayed in his Airbnb in Mexico City and he's become a dear close friend. And we just went to a, a Mexican birthday party yesterday. We went to a Mexican birthday party about a month ago for another friend who is based in Queretaro. And he had his party in Tequisquiapan, which is a which is a kind of a touristy type of town, about an hour outside of Queretaro. You know, we went to this Mexican birthday party yesterday here in Guadalajara for a friend that we met at that previous birthday party. He's a Mexican uh, Mexican guy, and his family owns a tequila distillery here in Guadalajara. And, you know, we had a fantastic time yesterday meeting him, meeting his friends, you know, rooftop terrace birthday party. It was really cool, really, really cool. And so we have... You know, our experience here so far has been amazing. Has it been perfect? No. You know, there's a lot of bureaucracy here. A lot of, you know, government processes are painful and time-consuming and expensive. And, you know, even the immigration process once we got to Mexico City and doing the CONHE, which is converting our residency visa into uh, a residency permit or card on arrival into Mexico. That was a long, drawn-out process. Buying a car is super risky here. Um, as I said, my our friend that we met through Airbnb in Mexico City helped me buy a car to make sure that I didn't get ripped off because it's a huge, huge bureaucratic nightmare to buy a vehicle in Mexico. And so, a lot of people will, uh, you know, a lot of people will, especially foreigners, it's very easy to get ripped off buying a car here, especially buying a second-hand car as opposed to buying a brand new car through a dealership. Now, I was lucky; I bought my used car through a dealership, but still it's a process and there's a lot of documentation following everything else. But I just want to show you an example of something here, right here in front of me. It just, it just popped into my head because I see it right now. Um, some things about Mexico will surprise you to the upside, will surprise you to the positive side that you, you didn't even know existed until you come here. And that is that almost every single city, in fact, I think maybe every single city in Mexico will close the roads the main roads for half a day on Sundays because it's Sunday here now so that people can ride their bicycles on the roads on a, on a Sunday to help keep the country healthy and to help keep people, people fit and to encourage people to get into fitness. So you can see here there is most, some of the streets are open but as you can see most of the streets are actually shut. So some main arterial roadways and, you know, access to petrol stations, things like that uh, will be open. But most of the streets in a city, even Mexico City with 25 million people, they will close the city for half the day on Sunday to encourage people to get out and ride their bikes without fear of being run down by cars. And there's a lot more things like that here that you wouldn't know, you know, because the media is not going to tell you that these good things happen in Mexico. And that's sad. I think that's really sad because Mexico is doing a lot of things right. Are they perfect? No, no country is perfect, but they're doing a lot of things right. Another thing that I really like about Mexico from a health perspective is that well, there's actually two things that stand out to me. One is that there's not that many fast food places here. Sure, all the majors are here, you know, all the all the McDonald's, all the Burger Kings, all the, you know, all the major fast food chains that you can imagine, Carl's Jr.'s, you know, all that stuff. They're, they're all here. Dairy Queen, they're all here. But they're not that common. And a lot of them don't have drive throughs And so, uh, you know, you kind of have to go out of your way 
to get fast food here. Yes, you can find it, but it's not on every single street corner like it is in the States and in many other countries, even New Zealand. It's much more accessible. Fast food is much more accessible in New Zealand than it is here in Mexico. The other thing I like is that almost every single park, uh, the, all the local community parks, and there's lots of local community parks here, um, they'll have exercise equipment, free exercise equipment that is, only requires body weight to operate. So both stretching, calisthenic equipment, um, quote unquote weight lifting equipment, but it's all based on body weight and leverage. And so you, they don't have any weights on there. When you get on to the piece of equipment, you are providing the resistance through your body weight. And so, you know, people don't have to have a gym membership here. As long as they have access to a local park, nine times out of 10, that local park will have exercise equipment in it that you can use for free. And so that's another really cool thing about Mexico that I like, that they're, they actually are probably more health conscious in many respects than people would think or assume. And, you know, although the rates of obesity here have gone up with the access to, I guess, more convenience foods and everything, I guess like every country in the world, I don't know what the exact stats are, but, you know, certainly obesity has gone up a bit. But um, I think I haven't seen it. I haven't, like, when I went to L.A. after we moved here, about six weeks after we moved here, I went to... Um, I went to I went to LA. I flew to LA to pick up my dog Herbie from the airport. We flew him in from New Zealand to LA, and I went and picked him up. And I just couldn't believe the amount of obesity. So I stayed there. I stayed actually in LA. I stayed in Carson for two days, letting the dog recover from his trip. We stayed in an Airbnb, and then and then I brought him home with me um, to Mexico. And then we and then we had a private driver drive us from Mexico City to Querétaro, which is where we were at the time. And so it was a it was an interesting, it was an interesting experience. But what I noticed was in the states, in particular, the obesity is just phenomenal. Like it's it's it seems like every second person is like morbidly obese. And I don't you know there's a lot to that. There's a lot to unpick to that. You know, is it that way everywhere in the states? No, of course not. Is it, you know, is it, is it the the shitty food? Is it the GMOs? Is it the access to fast food? Is it the, is it the the poverty that means that people are not necessarily buying the best quality food? They aren't necessarily cooking at home. They're working long hours, so they buy more convenience foods. I, I don't know what all the, um, what all the reasons are about that. Kirby. Um, I, look, I don't, I don't have all of the answers around that, but certainly, um, certainly one of the observations I have about Mexico in particular that maybe compares and contrasts with the United States. You know, I grew up in the United States, but I haven't lived there for, you know, around 30 years, so I certainly don't have my finger on the pulse of, of the local, local motivations behind how people do everything in the states anymore because I don't live there, but. One of the things I can say about Mexico is the extreme focus on family and the extreme, you know, people joke about like Fast and Furious and Familia and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, it really is true about the sort of Mexican or Latin uh, country lifestyles. Most of them are, you know, I think it's 82 or 85 percent Roman Catholic here is the dominant religion and there is an absolute focus just a, just a massive focus here on family the, the nuclear family mom dad kids grandparents oftentimes all of them living under one roof together looking after each other supporting each other you don't see a tremendous amount of homelessness here because of that because people always have a family member to live with you do see it a little bit but it's but it's but it's just not that common you don't have you don't have a skid row type situation where you have tens of thousands of people you know living homeless here because families tend to look after each other. You see a lot more homeless dogs here, which is actually freaking heartbreaking as a as an animal lover myself. It's freaking heartbreaking to see how many homeless dogs there are here. Um, that that's the that's the the one downside of traveling around Mexico. We've just seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stray homeless dogs, which is just it's freaking heartbreaking. But you know, compared to the homelessness of people that we've seen, we've seen far more homeless dogs than we have people. And I think that. That to me is just evidence of the focus on family and people uh, here in Mexico versus versus pets or animals, and so you know 
whatever whether, whether you agree with the whole concept of a nuclear family or whatever you know we can see the the direct results of that here in Mexico and that focus on the nuclear family and there's there's definitely that whole you know wokeness mind virus thing it's just not really here you know the whole concept of I guess um, you know extreme gender politics and all that stuff you don't really see that here in Mexico even the language has gender built into the language and so I think that there's a very clear understanding of of gender sex all that sort of stuff here is it really doesn't get discussed doesn't get really talked about because um, you know they feel like they're they're pretty clear on who's who and what's what and it doesn't need to be litigated it doesn't need to be discussed doesn't need to be um, you know it doesn't need to be debated so super interesting um, again no country's perfect but I think my whole point of making this video is that even I came to Mexico even though I've been here before and even though I I've always loved the the people I've always loved the weather I've always loved the food I've always loved the culture I've always loved the sights um, you know the, the ability to be active here because the weather in almost all places is just it's it's damn good almost year round. it's like 30 it's early in the morning here well not early what time is it here I did some stuff this morning before I got out. It's, it's actually just after 12, so it's not definitely not early. But it's it's probably 30 degrees Celsius already, and you know it's 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 been everywhere we've been here in Mexico so far. It's been somewhere between 25 and 35 C almost every single day that we've been here, and so coming from a place like New Zealand, which is an extremely cold wet country you know that means unless you like getting out in the rain and that sort of thing you 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 definitely maybe don't exercise as much in New Zealand you tend to stay huddled up in your in your warm house because you know the weather is just not as conducive to being out and about it doesn't encourage you to be out and about and whereas the weather here in Mexico which I kind of knew about but Sarah's been able to taste it firsthand you know it's it's kind of very consistently beautiful almost every single day we've I think we've only seen rain two or three times for a brief shower and it's gone back to being beautiful again so definitely the weather is a huge draw card for for me and my wife to Mexico but in general the reason why I wanted to make this video is not to pare down about Mexico and and necessarily say say that it's you know, not to say that it's a perfect country by any stretch of the imagination, but that there's so many misconceptions about Mexico. And you really, if you're going to move to Mexico or any other country for that matter, you know, there, was a, there was a lot of misconceptions about New Zealand when I moved there from the United States. You know, I had never, I had never when I decided to move to New Zealand with my family, because my grandfather was a Kiwi and we all were eligible for dual citizenship, and we just wanted to get out of California to experience something different. You know, I had never, I'd never visited New Zealand before. I'd never traveled there before. We just decided to up and leave, and move to move to New Zealand halfway around the world. It was one of the best decisions of my entire life. And met my wife there, and lots of good things. You know, I built my career in New Zealand, and you know, lots of good things have come out of that. But you know, the whole point of making this video is that preconceptions about places, about countries, about people, about cultures about, you know, business people or content creators or anything else, you got to make up your own mind. And the only way you can make up your own mind is to go there, visit, experience, travel, live. You know, even, even traveling to a place. Come on, Herbie. Come on. Come on. My dog is visiting a local dog. Herbie. Come on. He wanted to... We wanted to make friends with the little neighborhood Chihuahua. But anyways, um, like I was saying, I think that you, even as a tourist, if, I've, if you've only ever been to Cancun, if you've only ever been to Puerto Vallarta, if you've only been to Mazatlan, if you've already only been to Baja, California, you know, if you've only been to Cabo San Lucas, if you've only been to Mexico City, whatever, if you've only been to one or two or three places and that's where you always go back to because that's where you like to holiday, like there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not going to give you a true vision, it's not going to give you a true impression, it's not going to give you a true example of what a place is like 
going and visiting as a tourist. You have to you have to live there. And what I found, even in New Zealand, which you know doesn't which uh, speaks the same language I do. It's you know it's an English speaking country. Um, the reality is is that it took me five years living in New Zealand to feel at home, to feel like I had integrated enough into the society. And you, you have to remember that even though New Zealand is an English speaking country, there's lots of other differences. I came from the states where the imperial system rules and we don't use the metric system in the United States and so it took me probably took me a year to get used to everything being in the metric system weights measures speed you know everything and you know going to the shore the store and doing shopping in kilos and grams instead of ounces and pounds and to do that translation of not only the currency but the weight in my head and all that stuff it took me it took me probably a year to get used to the metric system another four years to really get used to all the local lingo and the, mo the money and um, you know building my career there and making friends and feeling like I fit in and that I understood the culture and that you know I wasn't in, 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 inadvertently being offensive as just being my American self and uh, and you know, I assume that it'll probably take me five to six years to feel at home in Mexico because not only do I have to deal, well, luckily I don't have to deal with the metric system because Mexico uses the metric system and so I know it inside and out now, having lived in New Zealand for nearly 30 years. But, you know, then we've got the language aspects. And even though I'm, I'm, I'm decent at Spanish from a basics perspective, from a basic conversational perspective that I can get by, I'm certainly... I'm certainly not fluent, not like, but by a long shot, and that's going to take me. It's going to take me a few years, I think, to get to a place where I'm super confident and comfortable speaking in Spanish on a daily, situational basis in every situation. And so, that's going to take time. And you know, what, even once we decide exactly where we want to settle, because we're going to travel for about a year before we decide where we want to settle. Um, you know, then once we settle. I have to get, you know, involved in my local community, get involved in local sports, get involved with, with all my hobbies, all that sort of stuff. It just takes time. And even even simple things like back, being back on the right-hand side of the road from a driving perspective. You know, I grew up in California where the United States drives on the right side of the road, as does Mexico. And so I grew up driving on the right-hand side of the road, but then moved to New Zealand and... and uh, and drive on the left, right-hand drive vehicles, but drive on the left side of the road. And so, you know, that's that's taken a bit of time to get used to again. You know, driving driving on the right-hand side of the road, but being in the left-hand side of the vehicle. So, all these little things, they're all mental stimulation. They're all emotional stimulation. They're all spiritual stimulation. They're all challenges that keep your mind growing and flexible and constantly adapting and figuring things out and making friends and getting outside your comfort zone and building the empathy gene that you have for people and those are all very good things those are all although they're challenges they're very very good things when it comes to you know your personal uh, and professional development you know it's 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 actually really helped me from a professional development perspective too because the way that the economy works here in Mexico is totally different to how it works in New Zealand, Australia, United States, and, and Europe. It's, it's just a completely different type of economy. The way that it works is very different. You know, lots of local community stores, hardly any big box chains don't really exist here. Online has really only been accepted in the last five or six years. And it's dominated by marketplaces like Amazon and Mercado Libre. You know, the, the, the small individual online stores, not that common here, except for supermarkets. They almost all have online stores where you can do click and collect or you can have delivery. You know, online purchasing here is done through the majors, you know. So their they're equivalent of the big box stores is Amazon and Mercado Libre. It's not, it's not Best Buy, the warehouse group, and all these, you know... Walmart is here, but it's not that common. It's another thing you got to get used to here. Dogs everywhere, both uh, both strays and used as security out in the front of people's houses behind their gates. So it uh, tends to be tends to be noisy. Another thing about Mexico, very noisy place. Fireworks being set off in almost every community, all hours of the day, day and night. 
church bells on a Sunday starting at 6 a.m. Uh, just noise, parties, loud parties. They don't really have noise control here. They don't really do noise control here. It's not a normal thing to call you know, the police. There's no noise control department that you can ring if your neighbors are having a party at 3 a.m. and you can't sleep. Uh, Mexico's just full of energy, full of noise. Very, very loud place compared to New Zealand. And that's something that... You know, no one can prepare you for it until you come here and you start experiencing it for yourself. You just have to accept it as part of the, as part of the culture. It's just absolutely ingrained in the culture. Loud noise, loud music, loud dancing, loud parties. Uh, you know, late nights, early mornings. It's just part of the Mexican culture. But anyways, hopefully this. I know this has been a bit of a ramble as I walk my dog around the neighborhood here. But you know what? I more than anything else, I just I'd like people to experience the world. And I think that by experiencing the world, we will all get along. We'll, have, we'll just have natural empathy for each other because we'll understand. We'll understand where somebody comes from. We'll understand better the culture they grew up in. We'll understand what makes them them and what shaped them becoming the person that they are. And until we can, until we can do that, and until we can appreciate those other cultures, those other peoples, those other ways of doing things... We're gonna have, we're gonna just have division everywhere. And so I know this sounds woohoo, tree, you know, tree hugging, hippie, whatever. But you know, I've lived in two other countries now, outside of the place where I was born. And I think that everybody should live somewhere else for at least a period of time, even if it's not permanently, even if it's only semi-permanently, even if it's only for six months, twelve months, eighteen months, do an exchange, do do whatever. That would, that's what I would encourage. It's brought so much value to my life, and hopefully I've brought, brought value to the local communities that I've lived in and operated in for the last 30-plus 30, 30 years. You know, this, this year will be my 49th birthday, and I just travel and living somewhere different to where you were born and raised is the best education you can ever give yourself that you can ever give your family, that you can ever give your community, uh, it will make you a better human being. So hopefully my experience will be useful to some of you. Again, this isn't specifically a, a business post. Like most of my posts tend to be very, very business focused. Not a lot of personal stuff. But hopefully you find this interesting and hopefully you get something out of it. Love you all.